Hello there! In Dragonflight, probably the most anticipated new ground only mount was the Bakar. These outsized riding dogs were a major feature of the Dragonflight level up story and a lot of players have been asking for them ever since. Mounts of this type are even added to some of the PTR builds only to mysteriously never make it to live. In patch 1026, they finally did arrive in the form of the biggest good boy of all, Taiwan who is the reward for the newly added Dragonflight meta achievement, A World Awoken. And that's not all. Many of the sub achievements also got mounts added to them as well, meaning that completing this meta will collect you a total of nine mounts, a dragon riding skin, two pets, a bunch of titles, and a few transmogs. Like its predecessors in BFA and Shadowlands, this expansion wide meta achievement requires a large investment of player time and can be pretty overwhelming, especially when it comes to deciding where to start. The good news is that the requirements aren't as punishing in my view as the BFA meta achievements and if you've been playing the game, there's a good chance that you'll have a lot of it already completed. I think I was about 80% already done when the meta showed up. Now in this guide, I'm going to try to demystify the achievement, providing some tips and hints but also some advice on where to start and what to prioritize. Before I dive into that, I know that one big question for many of you is, can it be soloed? And the short answer, sadly, is currently no. The biggest barrier is the first three sub-achievements, which are to defeat every boss in every raid. Now, the good news about this is that it can be done in LFR. So unless you're completely adverse to grouping up, this isn't actually very hard. If you queue as a DPS, LFR group sizes make it pretty anonymous experience and with all three raids becoming active in season 4, there shouldn't be any trouble getting groups if you queue in the weeks when the raid that you're currently trying to do is part of the Awoken rotation for that week. Now, there's no indication that this meta achievement is going to be removed at the end of the expansion and LFR raids usually become soloable towards the end of the next expansion, so I think that may also be an option for you if you're really a hardcore solo only player. The other problematic requirement for solo players is going to be Myths of the Dragonflight Dungeons, which requires clearing all the Dragonflight Dungeons and Mythic difficulty. As there's no queue system for Mythic Zero, this can probably be the biggest issue I suspect for players who might prefer to solo the game. If you do plan to do them, I recommend looking for groups in the weeks when the dungeon bonus quest is active, as there's usually a lot of people farming Mythic Zero at that time. Now, most likely these dungeons will become pretty easy to solo very early on in the next expansion, so again, that will be an option for you. Next up, I'm going to recommend starting your focus on those parts of the meta achievement that are not available to play every day. For the next part of the guide, I'm going to run through things roughly in up order based of how awkward or how difficult I think they will be to find. First up is the Into the Storm achievement, and specifically Storm Chaser. Storm Chaser requires you to kill 200 enemies in each type of storm in each of the four main zones. That's a total of 16 storms. The thing that makes this hard is the spawn cycle for the storms. Storms are active in a two hours up, one hours down cycle, and you generally have two storms active each time. As you complete storms, it becomes increasingly hard to find the last few that you need, given that there's no discernible pattern to what storm spawns and when. Fortunately, when a storm is up, it usually only takes 15 to 30 minutes to get your 200 kills. If you're chasing this achievement, my advice is to always check for storms whenever you're playing and grab any that you need so that you don't miss them. The add-on Tomcat's Tours has a handy reminder that can display on screen what storms are active when and the timers for the storm cycles are also available in WoWhead's Today in WoW section. The rest of the requirements for Into the Storm are straightforward for the most part. Stormed off requires that you kill 8 different rare spawns in each storm. Generally a rare spawns when the storm starts with another every 30 to 50 minutes for the rest of the event and there's a decent chance that you'll just get them as you get your 200 kills. I personally recommend having an add-on like rare scanner active to alert you when the rares do spawn so that you don't miss them. 
Elemental Overload requires you to farm up 5,000 Elemental Overflow, which you're basically going to get just by doing the storms. If you find that you don't have enough, you can farm this very easily over in the Forbidden Reach. And storming the runway requires getting an armor set from the storms. Now, the easiest way to do this is to just purchase a set from Mithressa in Voldraken. It will cost you 3,150 overflow, which of course, by this time, you're going to have. Next up, I'm back to another achievement that is worth doing very early on, as there's quite a few things in it which are only up at certain times, and that's closing time, the meta for time rifts, and the primalist future. The future we make requires killing every boss from the Storm's Fury event. Storm's Fury is an elite world quest that is up on a 4 hours up, 1 hours down cycle, meaning that you can repeat it every 5 hours if you want. This event is much easier to do if you join near the start of the rotation as that's when more folk tend to be doing it. Each boss spawns in a specific type of event and the spawn cycle is random so it can take a while to find all three of the bosses. Now, one tip is not to nuke Seismador down as to get credit for that part of the achievement you need him to split into two many bosses before he dies. Verified Rifter requires that you do just one time rift. Now, a new time rift starts every hour on the hour, so this one's actually pretty easy to get done. Chronoguard Connoisseur requires that you kill all seven bosses. Now, only one boss spawns for each type of time rift, so you're going to have to find all seven different types of time rifts. Now, the rifts are on a rotation, which is on screen now. So once you know what our current rift has spawned, it's actually a fairly predictable cycle, which does help a lot. Just following chronological orders requires that you do 100 tasks in time rifts. You'll get quite a few from doing the other achievements, but this one will mean that you're probably going to have to do a fair bit more than just those seven time rifts. Minute Menagerie requires you to get every Battle Pet reward. Now, you can actually just buy them for Paracausal Freights, which is the currency you get from doing rifts. I personally advise waiting until you've done all of the other achievements first before you buy any, as these pets can also drop as RNG rewards. Collapsed Reality requires you that you get the box of Collapsed Reality from the Time Rift. This is obtained by completely filling the bar in the rift. It's much more likely to happen in a bigger group, so I recommend either doing this in reset day when lots of people are doing time rifts, or to find and organize a raid group to do it. Lock and load requires that you get every weapon from a time rift that has the horde and alliance enemies. Three of the weapons drop from horde enemies and three from alliance or you can just collect the weapons from the weapons racks that will show up on the main map when players make them as part of one of the objectives. You can see what enemies will be in a time rift from the tooltip if you visit the area about 5 minutes before the time rift activates. To all the squirrels I've been before, now for this achievement what you need to do is to wait for the titan invasion enemies to be in the time rift. Again that will show in the tool dip about 5 minutes before the event. Once you're in the time rift search for an Alderoth mutagen orbs. They will show up in the main map and these are for Torghast type buff selections. When you click on the orb, look for one that is offering the fluffier fur buff and select that. Now, you might have to click in multiple orbs until you find the buff you want. Once you've got that buff, all you need to do is to complete the time rift, and when you go back to Sora Dormy, she will have an extra dialogue option to let you pet her. All you need to do is to be a bit weird and say yes to that, and you'll get the achievement. Finally, you will also need to do both wings of the Mega Dungeon. Now, this can be done in heroic difficulty, so you are able to use the Group Finder for this one, which will make it a lot easier to do than the Mythic Dungeon quest that I mentioned earlier. Next up is Wake Me Up, the Waking Shores and Dragon Scale Expedition achievement. The awkward one here is a legendary album. This requires that you photograph seven legendary NPCs during the photography world quests. There's one legendary for every quest that exists. 
Abigail and Chen Stormstout appear in the waking stores. Chief Telemantha Oculeth in the Azure Span, Elder Clearwater and Nat Pago in the Anaran Plains, and the Time Warp Mysterious Fisher and Rathian in Thildrazus. The only thing that makes this a bit awkward is that the quests are on a rotation, and as the quests only rotate once every three and a half days, as long as you're logging in every few days, you should be able to get all of these quests in a few weeks. The one that I found hardest to do was Abugar as he shows up towards the end of the quest path. Now, my advice is to not take your bar in the quest to over 70% until you get the legendary you need. If needs be and you reach right the end of the path, you are able to restart the quest and complete the bar in a second run, so it's not particularly hard to do. I'll put a link to some info on where to find the quests down below. Great Shots Galore requires that you get 100 Great Shots doing the quests. Now a Great Shot usually happens if you capture a mobs doing something interesting like jumping or maybe elementals using their abilities. It's actually easy enough to do, it just takes quite a while and you'll be doing a lot of these cataloging quests for quite a few weeks until you manage to complete it. Lead Climber just requires that you do every climbing world quest. It's as simple as that. You just need to catch them as they come around in the rotation. Also for climbing, make sure you, you grab the little sacks of supplies because you're, you're going to need 10 unique ones to get the next achievement, which is how did these get here? The highest peaks requires that you plant a flag in all of the highest fleets on the Dragon Isles. The locations do show up in the map as you fly around, but I'll also put a link to a list of all the locations in the description for you. Well Supplied requires that you learn the entire Dragon Expedition tech tree, which is skipped from Pathfinder Jeb down in the Waking Shores. Getting this complete will actually help a lot with some of the other achievements, and by now, you'll probably have all the Dragon Scale Expedition supplies that you need to fill it out. So I recommend going ahead and filling that out before you try to do any of the other achievements in this section. Now, like a few of the other achievements coming up, Adventure of the Waking Shores requires that you kill 10 rares in the Shear. The rares aren't very hard to find. They're just a bit random. So again, it's good to use rare scanner or silver dragons so that you don't miss out on them as you're going about the zone doing other things. And Treasures of the Waking Shore requires collecting the various treasures dotted around the zone. Most of those treasures are pretty easy as they're always up, but I'll, I'll link to a wowhead comment with the full details. Now, there are five gem cluster treasures across the whole of the Isles that require finding maps that you loot from either Expedition Scout Packs, Disturbed Dirt, or the Magic Bound Chest. You get one map per 50 or so loots, so this one will be a bit of a serious pain to farm as you do need to get the five maps. So you can see that's about 250 or so that you're going to want to loot. Next up, and we move on to the Naren Plains with Center of Attention. Now, there's a couple of achievements that come from the Grand Hunts. Huntmaster requires doing every hunt in every zone, and the Disgruntled Hunter requires that you talk to Hemet Nessing Marie Jr. at every hunt in every zone. Now, these achievements can basically be done together. Hunts are always up, but they rotate from zone to zone on an hourly basis. Just look for the hunts being active in a given zone that you haven't already completed and do hunts until they rotate through all three locations. Well, it's three in most zones, it's actually just two in Thildrazis. Completing a hunt will make it move to a different location so it doesn't usually take long to do. I'll put a link to the location of Hemet for each of the hunts in the notes down below. Long Hunter requires that you do a hundred hunt steps. Now each hunt has six steps, so just by doing the previous two achievements, you're going to already be about two thirds of the way there. You just have, you know, a few more hunts to do. And the best at what I do requires defeating 30 hunt bosses. Now you get between zero to three bosses per hunt. So by the time you've done a hundred hunts, you'll probably already have this achievement. 
Tetrachromancer is the harder one to do, as you need to loot every available Ahuna and Bakar customization from the hunts. Now, the Ahuna and Bakar are little companions that you'll get during the hunt, and the customizations are looted from the satchel that you get at the end of a hunt. All versions of the satchel can reward the customizations, so you'll likely get the majority of them just by doing the other achievements. But because this is RNG, that may force you to farm a little bit longer. If you do need to farm longer, the purple chest that you get from your first hunt every week does have a much better chance of giving you one of the customizations. Leaving the hunts aside, and who is a good backer requires that you pet every backer in the plane. I'm put a link to a wowhead comment with the location of the backers down below. Most are pretty easy, but there are a few that do require you have completed some of the side quest lines. The good news is that those quest lines will count towards some of the other achievements I'm going to come to later in the video. And then of course, there's the Adventurer and Treasures achievements. These are basically the same deal as was for the Waking Shores. Kill 10 rares and get all the treasures in their Naren Plains. Moving on to the Azure Span, and we have Army of the Fed. Supervisor requires doing 100 tasks in the Community Feast event. These feasts are up every 90 minutes. The easiest way to find out when the next one is, is to check the icon in the Azure Span map, as that will have a countdown timer. And all you need to do is to just do stuff for the chef, and run around and pick up fish heads when you've nothing else to do. Leftovers Revenge requires killing the rare that spawns at the end of the species. Now, that rare spawns only when you have a legendary suit, and that's most likely to happen when there's a lot of people around, so this one's usually a lot easier to do in reset day. Coming up in Season 4, there will be a rotational quest to do a feast, and the week that's up is probably the best time to try and do this. Secret fishing spots requires you to unlock the special fishing areas around the Dragonflight zones. This requires you to get your renown with the Tuscan up to 15 and involves crafting an Iskaran Ice Axe and a polished Basalt Bracelet from Tavio. I'll put a link in the wowhead comments with a bit more info, but basically you just pick up quests from Tavio and do what he asks to get the various unlocked. Secret fishing spots requires you to unlock the special fishing areas around the Dragonflight zones. Highland fishing requires renowned six with the Tuscar and completing the Highlands fishing quest. Ice fishing requires renowned ten and crafting an Iskaran ice axe from Tavio and Iskara. And lava fishing requires renowned 15 and crafting a polished basalt bracelet from Tavio. Tavio is basically the hub for unlocking all of this stuff. So if you keep an eye on them as you level up your renown, you'll basically not go far wrong. Once you have all the fishing areas unlocked, taking from nature requires you to do the daily quest from every area. There's one hole in the waking shores that's always active and the other four rotate around the zones on a weekly basis. At every hole there's two daily quests. One of those is to restock the area and you can do in every active spot. The second quest is the one that's specific to that spot and it's doing this one that you need to do in each area to complete the achievement. Because these rotate on a weekly basis, it will take you four weeks to complete them all. We're going to need a bigger harpoon requires that you fish up 25 massive lunkers. You summon a lunker using five ominous conch, which are things that you can fish up in the Dragon Isles. You also get five conch from doing the weekly world quests that appear in the active fishing spots. If you're not in a massive rush to get the conches, I actually just recommend doing those world quests when they're up and you'll eventually get it. If you do want to farm it though, the best place to get the conches is the fishing point in the Zaralek Caverns. Lend a Helping Span requires doing a bunch of the one-off quests in the Azure Span. I'll put a full list of those up on screen now. And of course, you also have to kill your usual 10 rares and get all the treasures things. You know the deal by now. Provo Draken, there's the Flight Club achievement. You're going to need to do a Siege of Dragonbane Keep for Home Sweet Home. The siege event is up every two hours. For snack attack, you'll want to feed beef 
that's a big frog that pulls the cart at the start of the event 20 times so this is actually going to require a few runs but all you need to do is find the little sparkling slugs pick them up run them back to beef and hit the extra action button that stores up to feed them chiseled record requires clicking on three tablets in the dragon bane keep area this can actually be done even if the event is not active I'll put the location of the tablets on screen now. I'm playing all sides requires that you hand in a restored obsidian key to all four of the NPCs in Obsidian Citadel. Each key requires 30 key fragments and three key framings from farming the mobs in the Citadel area to make. You need to pick either Rathian or Sibelian for the week before you do the hand-ins of the keys so they won't count, but you can hand in to every NPC in one week. I'll put the NPC locations up on screen now. Now this can bug out and you might find you need to try handing in more than one key to the NPCs until you get progress. But that, while it sounds annoying, isn't actually all that bad because Obsidian Keymaster requires that you hand 30 keys in in total. So you know the deal how to do it, you've just got a bit of farming ahead of you. Obsidian Champion requires that you do all four of the events that are triggered whenever 20 keys are handed in to one of the NPCs. Now this has group-wide progress, so you don't need to be the person to hand them all in. The hand-ins by other players in the areas do count. Now, I personally think the easiest way to do this this late on in the expansion is to try and find a raid group of folks trying to do the area, which is something a lot easier to do in reset day, but you can honestly just farm them all, all by yourself if you really want to. Welp, there it is, requires you to do every daily quest at the Welp Care Daycare in Valdraken. To unlock these quests, you will need to do the initial quest lines in each well. So the whole thing takes about 14 to 19 days to complete, depending on what comes up where. Daycare Derby requires you to do every whelpling mini dragon riding race. These rotate daily once you unlock the whelps. These are mini dragon races which use some odd abilities. Now, in my experience, it can be a little challenging to learn them because each whelp has different abilities, but they actually all share the same basic principles. So once you get the hang of doing one of the races, you can basically just press the same buttons in the other. Basically, what I found you could do is press one immediately in the start of the race, followed by two, wait until the burst of speed that you get is about to end, and then press three, two, one, two, and repeat until the end of the race. Hey Nanny Nanny requires you to do the follow-up dailies for each whelp that you get when you unlock them. This is something you'll basically get for free if you just keep completing all the dailies. And of course, you also have your 10 rares to farm and get all the treasures. We've done it quite a few times now, you know the deal. Next up is the Forbidden Reach and the You Know How To Reach Me achievement. And honestly, this is probably the most annoying one to do. Exploring the Forbidden Reach, really easy. Just fly around the zone. In fact, you're going to get this by doing the other achievements. So I wouldn't even make a point of trying to do this one. Treasure of the Forbidden requires that you get all of the main treasures in the Reach. Now, the easiest way to do this is to buy a reliquary scroll of perception from Cataloga Dahlia is this will give you a buff that will allow you to see the treasures on your map. These treasures are farmable. Once you've got the buff, you just fly around the zone and pick them up as they spawn. Corridor of the Forbidden Reach requires you to open a hundred, yes, a hundred of these treasures, excluding the Forbidden Horde treasure. It's a near certainty that you'll get all the ones you need for the other achievement by the time you do this. So again, all I just advise is just fly around the area until you get your 100. Forbidden Spoils requires that you open 10 of the Forbidden Hordes. These spawn every 30 minutes or so and you need to kill the mobs around them to make them lootable. They despawn about 2 minutes after the first loot. Champion of the Forbidden Reach requires that you kill every rare. Yes, that is all of them. You don't get away with just 10 this time. Now, they do have a decent spawn rate for the most part. I'm going to post a link to them down below. Now, 
13 of them do require special items which are created or looted by various professions. These items can be bought in the auction house and rares are shareable with others. So if you're able to get a group together, you can share the costs a bit. And then there's the rare, the loot specialist. This can spawn about anywhere in the Forbidden Reach at random and its spawn rate is also random. I've heard of very long gaps between spawns but also more than one spawning at the same time. To make matters worth, it despawns very quickly and you have at most 15 seconds to kill it after you engage it. Now this is by far the worst bit of this achievement. The only advice I have is that you keep your rear scanner active at all times while doing other stuff. I personally had my scanner go off during a dragon race and I had to quit the race and race over to get the rear and I only just managed to get it in time. Librarian of the Reach and While You Were Sleeping both require you to loot various books from the Forbidden Reach. Many of the books are in the outdoor parts of the zone and I put a list of the locations up on screen now. The rest of the books you find in the Zaskera vaults and this will likely require multiple runs for you to find them all. Scroll Hunter requires that you loot 50 scrolls from mobs in the reach and then loot the treasures that they reveal on the map. The best place to farm these is in the Froststone Vault and you can buy an item called an Azure Scrying Crystal from Craxis that will increase the drop rate. Now, do be aware that this buff does drop every time you loot a mob. These uh, maps will also drop from the treasures, so it's worthwhile postponing doing this until you've done the other treasure related activities to see how many more you're going to need to farm. Under the weather requires that you do one of each of the Frost Stone Vault event bosses. This event spawns every two hours on the top of the hour, but it does have a random rotation, so it can be a little bit annoying to get all four. Every door, everywhere at once, requires that you open every door in a Zaskera Vault run. You're going to need 28 to 29 keys for a full run. Keys drop from everything in the reach, and you can also buy them from any of the envoys in the main hub for 50 Dragon Isle supplies. If the achievement bugs out and you don't get credit, I found that exiting and re-entering the same vault does seem to make the achievement pop. And Door Buster requires that you open 150 Zors. This is going to require 6 weeks to finish due to the vault's weekly lockout. Kazaralek Kazaralek is the meta for the Zaralek Caverns. Embers of Motharian just requires that you do the 10.1 storyline. Just follow the campaign quests that you start with hidden legacies that you can pick up in Voldraken. The Smell of Money requires 200 Unearth Fragrant Coins that you can get from doing the rare public events that pop up throughout the zone. Or you can also get them from the Researchers Under Fire event. The latter gives 20 to 60 of the coins, so if you're patient time-wise, that's probably honestly the easiest way to do it. There's no place like Loam just requires maxing your renown with the Loam Niffin. Sniffing around requires finding five special items during the sniff and seeking digs. This does require that you've reached Renown 9 with the Niffin, but once you get there, just look for quest icons on your map when you're in a dig until you get all of them. Exploring Zaralek Cavern, that's pretty easy, just fly around the caverns. Adventurers is to just kill 10 rares, which is actually really easy in this zone given the very high spawn rate. Treasures of Zaralek Caverns is also fairly easy for the most part. You just find them and loot them. I'll put a list to the location up on screen. Now, there are two treasures that are worthy of note. Chest of the Flight can be quite hard to find. The entrance is actually in a cave very high up in the wall of the caverns. Once inside, you need to click on five pads. There's one pad for each of the Dragonflight and you need to do it in the order that the gems appear in the banner that's at the back of the cave. Now, this I found can be a bit buggy. If someone has looted it recently, it just won't work at all. And also sometimes running out of the cave and back in again can make it spawn. Basically, my advice is if you try and do it and it doesn't work, just go away, maybe come back in half an hour or so and give it another go. 
The other awkward one is the Blading Shadow Frame chest. This requires you to wear an Anexia scale cloak while you open the chest. Now you can buy the cloak from the auction house if you do need one, so it's not too hard to get. Stones cannot fly, just requires you to loot 2,000 flight stones. If you somehow haven't managed to do that by now, trust me, you will by the time you've completed this meta, so I wouldn't even bother targeting that one. Dream On is the meta for the Emerald Dream. Defenders of the Dream is just do the 10.2 cam quest line. You can start that by picking up the quest from Chandris and Voldraken. Adventurers of the Emerald Dream, you know the deal, it's just kill 10 rares. Treasures, yep, just get all the treasures. Pretty boring stuff by now. I Dream of Seeds is to plant seeds in every Emerald Bounty location on the Isles. I'll put a look link to our locations down below in the description. Explore the Emerald Dream. Yeah, just fly about. And Super Duper Bloom requires that you complete a Super Bloom and get the epic reward. Now, similar to the Time Rift, the easiest way to do this is a reset day when you get a really big group or to get a raid group. As the more people you have in your group, the more likely you are to successfully fill the bar. Okay, on now to just a few miscellaneous other achievements that you need to do. Nothing stops the research requires you to complete researchers under fire just once. Now that event starts every hour on the half hour and lasts about 10 minutes. And all you need to do is to kill the last boss to get credit. Through Ashes and Flames requires that you do the Suffusion Camp World Quest. This is a weekly world quest that alternates between Azure Span and an Aran Plane, so just find the quest and just do what it asks you to do. Dream Shaper requires you to complete the weekly Shaping the Dream Surge quest that requires you to get 100 Dream Surge Coalescence. The easiest way to do this is to pick up that quest and then to just do world quests in whatever zone the Dream Surge is active in. You get 10 Dream Surge Coalescence from every world quest that you do. Now here's the good news, we're actually on to the very easy bits now. Now this is Dragon Racing just requires you to do every Dragon Riding race in normal and advanced difficulty, but only at bronze level. You'll also need to do the reverse races in the Zaralek Caverns and Emerald Dream, but not in the original zones. Don't, don't ask me why they made it that way, they, they just did. I'll put links to the locations of all the Dragon Riding races down below. It also requires you to collect every dragon riding glyph, but given that's what's upgrades your dragon riding talent trees, you have done that, right? Right? Okay, let's through walk through all the other basic achievements that you're going to need to do. Don't worry, this is all easy stuff. Lore Master of the Dragon Isles requires doing all the campaign stories and side quests in all of the main zones. If you somehow skipped any of that, just look for the quest icons on your map and go do them, you slacker. Friends of the Dragon Isles requires all the max level campaign quests, many of which are unlocked by increasing your renown with the various dragon riding factions. Which you're going to need to do anyway for, oh my god, they were clutch mates. So go, now, seriously, go farm that renown. Now, as well as that, you're also going to need to get a lot of the minor reputations maxed out as well. This includes Sodid Army, which you do through Time Rifts, Rathian Sibelian, the Artisans Consortium, the Cobalt Assembly, and the Furball. Now, I'll put some links to the Wowhead guides for those in case you need them download, but honestly, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Finally, there's Dragon Quests. Now, that requires the max level side quest lines. Again, you're just going to be finding the quest icons on the map and go do them. Now, the one thing of note here is fringe benefits. This requires doing eight of the Ian's fringe dailies. Now, there's only one daily up per day, so wait, and you can find them over here. Now, finally, Blizzard also included Pathfinder of the Dragon Isles in this meta achievement, which honestly is a little bit pointless because Everything else you have to do to get this far will mean you've already completed Pathfinder. So if you see that in the achievement, honestly, just ignore it because you'll find it will be completed by the time you're done anyway. 
Well, as you can see, there's quite a lot to do here and a fair bit is time gated. But overall, I didn't personally find anything that was super painful other than the loot specialist and getting all the storms. But what about you? Have you done the meta? Do you have any questions about it or any tips to share? If so, do comment down below. If you found this video useful, do please let me and YouTube know by hitting the like icon. And if you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is by hitting the subscribe icon and the bell icon. That way you'll get notified whenever I go live with a new video. There's going to be lots more guides, reviews and news coming soon. That's all for now. I'll be back again with another video real soon.